Put you on keyboard, huh? All right, good to have you here tonight. Stand to your feet with me, please. Thank you so much for coming. Amen. Appreciate you being here. All right. In spite of uh, winter has been resurrected, huh? We, we forgot to tell winter that spring was here, that winter couldn't be resurrected. Amen. All right, would you pray with me, please? Father, we honor you and thank you tonight. Thank you for this opportunity to gather again tonight and to do what we said last night, Lord, to lean in, to draw closer to you. And, and we're reminded in James where you said that if we'll draw close to you, you'll draw closer to us. And so, Lord, our hearts hunger and thirst. It's not that we were hungry and thirsty. We continue to be hungry and thirsty. We want to understand you more. We want to understand your ways. In Psalms, it says that you showed the nation of Israel your works, but Moses knew your ways. We want to know your ways, the ways of life, the paths of life. So we're here tonight, Lord, to draw closer to you, to lean in. So we open our hearts up before we go any further tonight. We recognize your lordship in our lives. We declare your lordship in our lives over our lives and through our lives. So we glorify you tonight. And we ask you tonight, Lord, for the rest of the time we're in here tonight, driving home and tonight, tomorrow, speak to us. I keep thinking of that statement the psalmist said when he said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. So we honor you tonight. And we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated for just a minute. All right, we're going to go to a part of what, you know, as all of you know, it's Holy Week. And so last night, we, we Sunday, of course, we... Uh, no, it was Palm Sunday, Jesus' triumphal entry into, the, into, the, into Jerusalem. And uh, last night, you know, we, we went over the events there and him cleansing the temple. But I forgot to tell you last night, those of you here, that that was the second time he did that. He did the first time right at the beginning, and then three and a half years later, he came back and they were back at it again. And, uh, and so we went over all that last night and what that meant. And we prayed about us having clean hands and pure hearts. Amen. Amen. And uh, beautiful. So tonight I want to show you another interesting event that happened uh, that week. And it, it's, a, it's, it's kind of an interesting verse. And it begins in Mark chapter 11. And they came again to Jerusalem. And as he was walking into the temple, there came to him the chief priests and the scribes and the elders and they said unto him, By what authority do you do these things? I think it's always interesting to me as I read this. If you don't mind, I'll kind of take you into what my reaction to it is. is they didn't ask him how he did them. They were questioning if he was legitimized in their religious system didn't matter what he did. They just were questioning who gave him the authority. In other words, we didn't tell you you could do these things, so you shouldn't be doing them. So always be careful in our life that because God doesn't do things maybe in somebody's life the way we think he ought to do them doesn't mean he's not doing them. Amen? Amen? And said, who gave you this authority to do these things? Verse 29. Jesus answered and said to them, I will also ask of you one question. Answer me and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, was it from heaven 
or was it of men? Answer me. This is John the Baptist. They reasoned within themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say, Then why did you not believe him? <laughs> and if we say of men, they feared the people, for all the men counted John that he was a prophet indeed. And they answered and said unto him, We cannot tell. Now, to me, at that point, and I think there's a lesson there for all of us to learn, there should be a comma. And their next question should have been, or the next statement, in my opinion, should have been, and for us to learn from was, you tell us. You tell us. But it's hard to do that if you don't recognize Jesus' authority to speak into your life. Can I hear a good amen? Yes. And Jesus answered, he said unto them, Neither I tell you by what authority I do these things. Now, where did he get that authority? He had this authority. Where did it come from? I want you to go to one more verse with me in the book of Philippians. It said, Wherefore God hath, given, hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. How many of you believe that tonight? Write a name that is above every name. Verse 10. Well, we don't have verse 10. Oh, yeah, it was only one verse, wasn't it? You all need to start asking me about what we're going to put up there. All right, well, the next thing says, so at the sound of his name, you know it? Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. Of uh, beings in heaven, beings in earth, and even beings under the earth. And they shall all confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In the book of Philippians, the book of Hebrews, the first chapter says that he has given him a more excellent name. A more excellent name. So he's given him a name higher than others, and it's a more excellent name. So as we worship tonight, I'm going to ask you to think about that. And I'm going to ask you to think about the reality that Jesus has authority to change things in your world. Amen. He has authority. has been given to him. When he was ascending to heaven, he said, All power and authority has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. It's all been given to him. The authority that he had was given to him by the Father. And he still has that authority. Amen? And that he has authority to speak into your life. Will you give him that authority tonight to speak to you? Correct you if you need it? Encourage you if you need it? Amen. Let's not reject what he says to us. Let's receive him and who he is. And, you know, we know what the Pharisees didn't know. We know who Jesus is. So let's, let's open our hearts up and our minds up and allow him to speak into our lives. And recognize that he has the authority. Maybe you came in here tonight and you're, you're, you're lacking peace. He has the authority to speak peace. Peace be still. Maybe you're in here tonight and there's unforgiveness in your life. He's got the power in you, in, tonight to, to help you to have the power to forgive. Maybe you need forgiveness, but you just keep beating yourself up. He has the authority. Do you believe that? To forgive all your sins. Every one of them. He has the authority to bring financial strength to your life. He has the authority to heal your body. He has the authority to deliver your son or your daughter. He has the authority to deliver you. Stand your feet with me, please. Let's, as we worship tonight, let's focus on that. Let's think about him, amen, and his authority and where his authority came from. And Let's make sure that he has that authority in us tonight, amen. Let's worship. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful through ten away. 
Joy, come on. And I still got joy in chaos. I got peace that makes no sense. So I won't be going on there. I've got help by my own strength. Cause I built my life on Jesus. He's never
He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't fail. Come on, give him praise.
could sing these songs as I often do but every song must end and you never do so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again cause all that I have is a heartless Nothing else meant for a king Except for our hearts singing Hallelujah Hallelujah Oh, hallelujah
softly and only it will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you Lord yes you are Lord and only it will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing Great are you, Lord. Absolutely beautiful. Would you just close your eyes for a moment? I just felt in my spirit that I just wanted, to, me personally, I just wanted to just be still for a few moments and We've all, we've all heard the verse, right? Be still and know that I am God. But you know, the first time that was spoken to the nation of Israel was when they were in absolute chaos. They were at the Red Sea. And Egypt was coming. And it looked like they were going to be destroyed and they were screaming in fear, accusing Moses and in the middle of that, God spoke and said, be still. And know or remember or realize I am God. Can I remind some of you tonight, God is on your side. Some of you are, have heard this word, nothing can be done. Or you've heard it in your mind, it's impossible. I open up tonight encouraging you to think about the authority that Jesus has. There's an incredible statement, and, and I've explained it to you before, but I want to remind you of it tonight. Many of us misinterpret this verse. Jesus said, all things are possible to him that believeth. And our interpretation of that verse is that he was saying to us, but if he was saying to us, he grammatically would have said it like this, all things are possible to those who believe. He wasn't saying, or let me rephrase that. What he was saying was, calm down, Charles. I'm believing. All things are possible to me. I'm believing that this can change in your life. Did you hear that? He's believing that all things can change in your life. Impossible. All things are possible to him that believes, and he believes it. He believes it. We have such a me-centric world and life, but it's important tonight to remember that he is believing for you tonight. The Bible says he ever lives and makes intercession at the right hand of the Father. How about that? Makes intercession for us. Okay, let's be still for a moment. I want you to look into your heart. Be quiet. Let peace come back into your life if you need it. Let confidence be restored back to you tonight because God is on your side. It's not something you muster up on your own. It's because of what you have as a child of God.
Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak that name tonight on purpose, with intentionality, in faith, in confidence, in hope. I speak that name tonight over all our lives. I speak that name tonight. That name that is above every name that can be named. I speak that name. I declare that name over your life. I speak that name over your family. I speak that name into your mind. I speak that name into your family. I speak that name into your marriage. I speak that name over your children. I speak that name over your career, over your job, over your business. I speak that name to that abuse that you may have endured. I speak that name to that betrayal that you may have gone through. I speak that name into that traitorous act that somebody did to you. I speak that name into your life tonight. And whatever name you can name your problem, whatever name you have, whatever name you have been given, you are this, you are that, you are this, you are that. There, his name is above that name. No matter how powerful that name is. Power, Pastor, you don't understand. I'm, I'm addicted to fill in the blank. There is a name greater than heroin. A name greater than fentanyl. A name greater than alcohol. A name greater than porn. A name greater than, than, than sexual addiction. There is a name greater. And tonight we speak that name. We speak that name. I speak that name. Now you start speaking it in Jesus' name. I speak that name into the lives of every person here tonight, every family represented. Lord, we stand on your promise tonight. You said, you've said before us, life and death, blessing and cursing, choose life. We have chosen life by being in church tonight on a Tuesday night. We have chosen life. We have chosen life. We could have chosen TV. We could have chosen going out. We could have chosen going to bed. We could have chosen being in a restaurant. There's all kinds of things, but we chose life tonight. Did you realize that? We've chosen life tonight. And because of that, both us and our seeds shall live. And we speak that promise over our lives and we declare tonight the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Think about whatever it is that may be tormenting some of you in here tonight. Some fear that is racking in your life, some need that just screaming at you. Hey, you know what? Needs scream. I've had lots of needs screaming at me, but I, you know, I love that song we just did. There's a lion living in me though. Huh? I'm not trying to be preacher cute. I'm just trying to help you here with something, right? There's a lion living in you. It's the lion of the tribe of Judah and he is real. He is the real deal. Satan goes about as a roaring lion. He is the lion. All right? Now, you know this to be a fact, right? But you take somebody who thinks they're a lion and you put them in a room with a real lion and close the door, come back in about an hour and see who walks out. Come on. Right? The real one's walking out. Lift your hands towards heaven for just a moment. Father, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, we stand here tonight as we celebrate Holy Week. And we, we stand here tonight. And, and your word just keeps resounding in me. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You came to benefit our lives, to give us life and life more abundantly. You came to make us more like you, to give us the opportunity to be we, me. 
that somehow, some way, you saw, you believed, and all things are possible to you. You believed that I could be conformed to the image of your son. You believed that all of us could be conformed to the image of your dear son. What a faith you have. So we stand here tonight and throw up our hands in honor and glory to the King of Kings. God, I'm so grateful that I don't do my life by myself. That you've come into our lives and you never leave us. You never forsake us. You never abandon us. You're always on our side. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Who forgives my iniquities. Who heals all my diseases, the psalmist said. So we stand here tonight with a spirit of expectation because you are good and you do good. And we worship you tonight, Lord. We worship you tonight, Lord. The Lord just said to me in a very sweet way and, he, and I just heard it in my spirit and wants me to say it to you, and I, I don't say this any other way than just God's benefit coming to you. There's a couple of you in here tonight. It, it's time to end this rebelliousness in your heart. It's just time to bring it to an end, right? It's just time to go with the Lord not only confess Jesus as Lord of your life, but live Jesus as Lord of your life. Quit holding on to that old rebellious nature. It's not going to get you anywhere. Isaiah 119 is one of my favorite verses. If you be willing and obedient, Charles, that's what I read if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you'll be devoured. The same land that will feed me will devour me. And all I got to do is shift my pattern and be willing and obedient. And I'll eat the good of the land. Let's be quiet for another moment. Maybe God wants to speak to us, huh? Trust in Lord, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. I trust in Lord, my Savior. Blessed 
Jesus is mine. He's been my fortress in the fire. Time after time, born of the Spirit, washed in His blood, and what He did for me on Calvary is more. I trust in God, my Savior, the Lamb, who will never fail. I trust in God, my Savior. the Lord. Give the praise and worship team a great hand clap tonight. Wow. My goodness. You know, I, I know I say this to you all the time, and, and, and I, 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 I know you believe it. You know, one of the great blessings of my life for the last 50 years, God doesn't seem that long. Wow. Is uh, I'm not crying because 50 years went by. I'm crying because <laughs> why cry? There's nothing you can do about it. You can fight it, which I do. But uh, I was just I was touched by. How faithful God has been. He's faithful then. He's faithful now. And he'll be faithful to the end. So one of the things that I've enjoyed traveling and speaking in churches and conferences all over the world well, I've said 90% of the time I've enjoyed it, but not every church has praise and worship like we have praise and worship. 
and I, I don't say that judgmentally. I just say it as an observation. Amen. Amen. So never take it for granted. Always be grateful for it. Many of these people up here are volunteers. They do it because they, they love God, they love the kingdom, they love you. Amen. We've been talking tonight about Jesus' authority. And really, that authority begins and truly ends. It is the Alpha and the Omega of your allowing him to be Lord of your life and receiving him as your Savior. I find it fascinating that in Romans 10 it says, if any man confess Jesus as Lord and believe in his heart God's reigns from the dead, he shall be saved. I was thinking about that one day and I thought, how come it didn't say any man that receives Jesus as Savior? It says that in other places, but in Romans 10 it says, if you confess Jesus as Lord. And just like that, I, I felt like the Holy Spirit said to me in a whisper, he said this, and I'll try to imitate him. He said, because it's easy to receive him as your Savior. Amen. It's hard to live your life with him as your Lord. He's right. My struggle in my 50 years has never been with him being my Savior. I embrace him wholeheartedly. Amen. Save me. Take me to heaven. Forgive my sins. You're wonderful. You're the Lamb of God. You're spectacular. You're beautiful. That, amen. Come on, right? Isn't that easy? I mean, that's it, right? Once you recognize that you are a sinner, you need a Savior. My struggle has been... Who's going to be Lord here? And that's why I tell myself every day when I'm walking and praying, I, I go through this every day and I say to myself, Jesus, you are Lord in my life. Amen. And I meditate on that for a few moments. And then I say, Jesus, you are Lord over my life. And then I say, and I meditate on that, and then I say, Jesus, you are Lord through my life. I want other people to see your Lordship through my life. Amen. Amen. Could I have every head bowed, please, for just a moment? I want to give you the opportunity tonight, if you've never done so, to invite Jesus into your life. to receive him as your savior. We all need a savior. Because we've all sinned. I don't want you to die in your sins. I want you to die in Christ. In eternal life. I want to give you the opportunity tonight to do what Paul said in Romans, to confess Jesus as Lord of your life and believe in your heart God's raised from the dead so you can be saved, so you can experience God's salvation. He loves you so much. He has a wonderful plan for your life. As I said earlier, Jesus will never leave you or forsake you. I'm telling you, 50 plus years have come and gone in my life. He's been with me every day. He's been there with me when I was on mountaintops and oh my Lord, he was with me when I was in the valleys. To be honest with you, there have been times I felt like the valley, I wasn't in the valley, the valley was on top of me. And he was there. Brought me out of the miry clay. Put my feet on the rock to stay, the psalmist said. He wants to do the same for you. He didn't do it for me because I'm a preacher. He did it for me because I chose him and I accepted him, just like hundreds of other people in this room have done so. You open your heart up. He knocks on the door of your heart. So if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you've never received him as your Lord and your Savior, 
Would you please pray with us tonight? The whole church is going to pray in just a moment. I want to pray for you tonight. Pray with you tonight to become a child of God. So before we pray, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. If you'd say to me tonight, Pastor, I hear it. I hear the knock. <laughs> the knock sounds a lot like your voice. Yeah, it does. But he's knocking on the door of your heart. He's using my voice to knock on your door. You say, Pastor, I'm going to pray with you tonight. Tonight is my night to become a child of God. If that's you, before I pray, before we all pray, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. Put your hand up right now. Just raise your hand up. It really encourages me to see your hand. But more important, you're saying, God, here I am. Yes, hands are going up. Raise them up and keep them up for just a moment. Our usher is going to come and give you a little card. It's important to us as a church that you get that card. Wonderful. All right, all of you raise your hands, everyone else. Let's all pray together. I'm going to give you the words. Give it to mean it, meaning. Say it with enthusiasm and meaning, right? Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, believe I believe in you. I believe you are the Christ, the, Christ. the Son of the living God. I also believe tonight that you came and died and rose again so I could become a child of God. You cleared my sins out of the way. And I receive you tonight as my Lord and my Savior. You died for this moment so I could become a child of God. I honor you. I praise you. And I am grateful to you. For you had such faith in me that you were willing to give it all. And tonight I receive you. Come sit on the throne of my life. Be Lord here. Be Lord through me. Be Lord over me. Be Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we rejoice with these people tonight? Absolutely wonderful. Look, we gave you a card. has that QR code on it. If you prayed the prayer with us tonight and you didn't get the card, that's cool. They're going to leave the QR code up there for a moment. Please scan it. Answer a couple questions. It's important to us. I believe it will be important to you because we want to come along beside you and help you to learn how to enjoy the abundant life that Jesus came to give you. Amen? That you have now stepped into. Praise the Lord. All right. Hey, listen, before I let you go, tomorrow night is Wednesday night, church. And uh, so, you know, we're going to go three nights in a row. You are that saved. Amen. Amen. Going to go three nights in a row. All right. Hey, I want to tell you, tomorrow night we're going to wrap up this part of the teaching on heaven. We're not wrapping up the teaching on heaven. I'm going to come back and do some more later. We have only covered maybe 25% of what, I, what the Bible has to say to you. But tomorrow night, I'm going to show you some of the things that life is going to be like that you're going to live when you're living in the new heaven, the new earth, in the new Jerusalem. You're going to love it. Amen. So come and let God speak to you tonight. Okay, I love you all. God bless. Be safe. Be nice in the parking lot. See you back tomorrow. Be safe. Be blessed.